Everyone makes mistakes, including influencers. So here's a list of common mistakes influencers make according to one. If you don't know me, hi, I'm Tiara Willis. I have been an influencer for about eight years. I make over six figures being an influencer. I actually just signed my first six figure deal for this year. I've been in pretty much every publication, like Forbes, Vogue, like all of it, Google, period. So now that we've got that out of the way, Let's talk about this list. So one of the biggest mistakes I think a lot of influencers make is not doing any outreach. I've seen a lot of people on this app who have a large following complain about, you know, not having brand deals and all that stuff, but you need to do the work in order to reach out versus like expecting everyone to just come to you. One of the best ways to do this are one, to utilize LinkedIn and kind of find out who works or who are the PR managers at some of your favorite brands. And from there, you can gather their email information and send a cold email. I know it sounds awkward and cringy, but trust me, you will be so much better for it. I've even sent emails to like straight up customer service asking me directed to the PR team and it's happened, it works. Do what you need to do. I want you to reach out to people. I want you to just stop expecting for everyone to come to you. No is always an okay answer. I think it's important to cold email anyway, even if you get no's, because what they can do is add you into their roster of influencers so that when their next campaign comes up, they may keep you in mind. Also sign up for a bunch of platforms that can tell you about upcoming campaigns like Octoly, Collectively, Influencer, there's a bunch out there. Also seen some influencers just slide into a brand's DM and send them a little introduction. I personally never done that. I really prefer to do email, but if it works, it works. Next huge mistake I see people make is not networking across. Sometimes when people want to be an influencer, they become very like tunnel visioned, so much so that they neglect to see the other influencers within their niche that they can support and network with. It's really important to build relationships with people within this space because you never know who can give you a good contact or how you could support them. A lot of the deals and partnerships I've made lasted me for years because five years ago, I was just a nice person. And now, you know, we've been able to work together, but I've only been able to do that because I network across, not just focusing on me and what I can do, but what I can do for others. Um, and then sometimes that comes back to you. Next, I think influencers severely struggle with overconfidence. I think one way this happens through lack of humility and I think this is at the fault of just constantly having so many people praise you and support you so much so that you just become a little bit delusional. I think the best medicine for this is just to keep regular people in your life. I have so many yes men and that can just help you stay a little bit more down to earth, you know? And I say this with love and kindness, not judgment. I've definitely been there. I think another way that influencers struggle with being overconfident is just expecting that what they have will last forever. So many influencers fall off, they have scandals, all this stuff, and they put so much stock into this career, they've spent so much money for this lifestyle, and then once something goes wrong, it don't, it don't, it don't end well. This industry is extremely volatile. There is very, very minimum job security in this space. And this goes right to my next point about having limited streams of income. I think as an influencer, it's very dangerous to solely rely on brand deals because you never know what could happen with you, with your image or just engagement or the time, so many different things. So it's important to invest in different streams of income. You can do this by launching a digital product. You can do this by launching merchandise. You can do this within investments like real estate or having an IRA or, or so many different things. Again, you never know what could happen in this industry, but you have a few things. You have skills, right, in social media, and hopefully you have a community that you've built and find a way to monetize that outside of, you know, being on TikTok. It's also important to be careful with comparison. I'm recognizing that some people's numbers look like this and some people's numbers look like that, but that doesn't mean you can't monetize. If you're looking for more advice like this, I recommend you check out my masterclass called Securing and Negotiating Influencer Brand Deals, and you can find that in link in my bio.